At 101, we also have another great English literary critic, and that is Walter Pater. And I'm counting these two books as one because look how thin they are. This is The Appreciations and the Renaissance. After stumbling over myriad hints the world had sent him, this ignorant boy snuck Machado to assist into the list, since, to put it plainly, he is the supreme black literary artist to date, as Harold Bloom wrote in his book Genius. The book we're reading is obviously the posthumous memoirs of Brass Cubas, translation by Gregory Rabassa, because Garcia Marquez said Rabassa's English translation of 100 Years of Solitude was superior to the Spanish original. We have another English poet novelist, and many say his poetry is better than his novels, but I had to go with his novels instead, and that is Thomas Hardy. And I got here The Mayor of Casterbridge, the most tragic of novels, it is said by some critics, the brother of one of the great American novelists, and that is William James, the psychologist, with his The Varieties of Religious Experience, the most beautifully writing of the American novelists, apparently, Henry James, with portrait of a lady. We have the Merlin from Deutschland, Nietzsche. First we will be reading his The Birth of Tragedy and The Case of Wagner and we'll be supplementing that with Thus Spoke Zarathustra because even though it might be his most, most popular work it is his possibly weakest work. Then The Genealogy of Morals and Ecce Homo, Beyond Good and Evil and finishing with The Will to Power. We have Robert Louis Stevenson with The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We have the sublime, the divine Oscar Wilde. And we will be starting with an artist, the artist as critic. Now this is a collection of his critical writings edited by Richard Elman. Then it will be The Picture of Dorian Gray. And I've read half of this book before. Finally, his plays. Most importantly, The Importance of Being Earnest, which is a fabulous play. We have the great Cherubic, 19-year-old French poet, 19-year-old, yeah, Rambo. We're counting this as one work because we're using the translation of Paul Schmidt for most of Rambo's work, and then for his illuminations, we're using the translation by John Ashbery. John Ashbery himself is one of the greatest living American poets, I think. Living? I hope he's still living. He might be dead. We have the grand progenitor of psychology, Freud. Okay, this one is a bit of a handful, but we're only putting in three sections for him because we're using the translations by James Strachey, the complete psychological works of Sigmund Freud. That's why they're all in these cut up books. But first it is the interpretation of dreams and this is the first part and this is the second part, but usually you can get it in a single book. It's just like this because of the complete psychological works. At 116, we're reading from out of this book, three essays on sexuality, nothing else in this book, and also Freud's essay on narcissism, and also his essay, A Child is Being Beaten, which are readily available online, I think. 117, we're reading Beyond the Pleasure Principle from out this book, and Inhibitions, Symptoms, and Anxiety from out of this book. These are the grand monuments of Freud. That's why I'm choosing them a la carte. We're doing a little bit of a time split, but five plays altogether. We're going back in time a little bit for four English comedies. First, Ben Johnson's Volpone, Congreve's The Way of the World, Goldsmith, She Stoops to Conquer, and Sheridan's The School for Scandal. And this edition by Penguin Classics is the one to get because these are the main plays of the English tradition other than Marlowe and Shakespeare. And we're adding onto that as a fifth, the belligerent Irishman, George Bernard Shaw with his Pygmalion, Pygmalion. We've got another one of the greatest novelists of all time, Joseph Conrad. And first we will be reading Heart of Darkness, but we're also supplementing it with Achibe's Things Fall Apart. Next is Conrad's Lord Jim, and then Conrad's Nostromo, which is also the name of the ship in Alien. The great Russian playwright, but first off we're going with his short stories, Anton Chekhov, and this is translated by Richard Pevier and Larissa Volokonsky. We're doing a kind of combination here of Chekhov and the great Italian dramatist Luigi 
Pirandello. And what we're taking from Pirandello is six characters in search of an author and Henry IV. And then from Anton Chekhov, we are taking Uncle Vanya, the three sisters, and the cherry orchid. And this is translated by Anne Dunnigan. I wasn't gonna add any great books from my own heritage because there isn't much, no. but the greatest book out of the Philippines by the author Jose Rizal is Noemi Tangeri, this or the social cancer as titled by Charles Derbyshire. And I chose this translation of Charles Derbyshire's instead of the modern translations because he totally gets the Filipino humor way better than all these new translations that aren't as funny. But you can go with whatever translation you like. We have the great poet that everyone knows, W.B. Yeats, with his poetry, drama, and prose. This is the Northern Critical Edition. The noble Englishman who's been much politicized, Rudyard Kipling, with his novelistic masterpiece, Kim. We have, oh no, 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 Marcel Proust. No, no! Look at these bad boys with In Search of Lost Time in three parts, translated by D.K. Scott Moncrief and Terence Kilmartin, the great poet critic of France, Paul Valéry. Valéry? The selected writings of Paul Valéry, the great American poet, some say the national poet, Robert Frost, with his collected poems. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to be reading everything out of here, maybe just the grand selections. We have the very jovial G.K. Chesterton with The Man Who Was Thursday. We have the German novelist, also the winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature, Thomas Mann with The Magic Mountain, translated by John E. Woods, the dark disciple of Freud, C.G. Jung. And we're going with his The Portable Jung, so we can get that wide sweep, and with Ion, translated by R.F.C. Hull. And The Portable Young is actually edited by Joseph Campbell, who did, who also did, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. So that's pretty cool. We're going back to the German poets, and whoever's watching might be a little bit angry with me for not going with Holderlin, but damn, the translations from German into English are just so bad. But because a certain YouTuber has talked about this poet so obsessively that she seemed almost to exit the realm of reasonable and communal sanity, I have included Rainer Maria Rilke. And this is the selected poetry of his translated by Stephen Mitchell. Stephen Mitchell also did the Bhagavad Gita. One of my all-time favorites, the American poet Wallace Stevens. And this is the palm at the end of the mind, selected poems and a play. And this is edited by his daughter, Holly Stevens, the beautiful proto-feminist Virginia Woolf. And this is To The Lighthouse, uh, apparently her greatest literary achievement. Now, 139, 140, 141. <sighs> we got the Irishman, James Joyce. <laughs> and, and let me tell you, we got the port a portrait of the artist as a young man. No, 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 no. We got Ulysses. Wait, wait, wait. wait. And, <laughs> Oh my god, we got Finnegan's Wake! Wait, 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 wait! Yeah! I don't know how we're gonna get through Finnegan's Wake, but we're gonna do it. We're just, we're just gonna do it, obviously. And I'm also using as supplements, just for the fun of it, you don't have to. For Ulysses, I'm using Frank Budgen's, Budgen's James Joyce and the Making of Ulysses, which Bloom says is one of the best intro books. Now for Finnegan's Wake, I've got two books, I'm not sure which one I'm going to go with, but many people suggest the Reader's Guide to Finnegan's Wake by William York Tyndall, and many say A Skeleton Key to Finnegan's Wake by Joseph Campbell again, and Henry Morton Robinson. Maybe we'll read both. <laughs> I don't know. Now we have the modern day Dante, so it is said, the Jewish, German, Franz Kafka. We're starting off with The Trial, translated by Wills and Edwin Moya. And then Kafka's The Complete Short Stories. I think it's a collection of translations and the collection is edited by Nahum and Glatzer. And lastly, we've got Kafka's The Castle, which I think is unfinished, translated by Willa and Edwin Muya again. And we're supplementing it with 
the blue one, Tavo Notebooks, translated by Ernst Kaiser and Ithney Wilkins. We have the now much maligned D.H. Lawrence. Can somebody give me the book? Starting off with the Rainbow, and I also want to read with the Rainbow his short story, The Prussian Officer, because. While being a great novelist, he was also a great short story writer and a great poet, but we'll put the poems aside. But we're reading also The Prussian Officer, which is a deeply homoerotic work for you Yaoi fans out there. <laughs> and then, hey, stop! I, why? And women in Love. And these are said to be his true masterpieces and not Lady Chatterley's Lover which just got popular it seems because it was just so controversial. We have the greatest modern German poet I believe, many say so, it is Georg Trakor. It is the Shush Fool. It is Autumn Sonata, selected poems, translated by Daniel Simcoe. Now I wanted also to put Paul Ceylon because I love Ceylon's poem Death Fugue but alas not enough room. We have the Portuguese man I believe with much too many nom de plumes, much too many faces, much too many alter egos, but a lovely man nonetheless, Fernando Pessoa. Now starting with his poems, I'm not sure which translation to go with. I have Richard Zenith and also the translation by Edwin Honig and Susan M. Brown. And then second by Pessoa, it is the Book of Disquiet and this is also translated by Richard Zenith. The neo-Christian, a little bit anti-Semitic, T.S. Eliot, but nonetheless one of the great modern poets. And this is his collected poems from 1909 to 1962, and it contains all of his best works. We have many people's favorite writer of all time, J.R.R. Tolkien. And I've chosen The Hobbit because, first of all, the opening of it, I haven't read The Hobbit, but the opening is wonderfully charming. And Harold Bloom has said that this contains more literary strength than, alas, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. The incredibly powerful Zora Neale Hurston. I read the first three pages of this and it just blew me away. Can't wait to read more. One of the great Russian eccentrics, Mikhail Bulgakov with The Master and Margarita. And with this translation is by Michael Glennie. I know some people might hate Michael Glennie because there was some certain thread on Goodreads about how bad Glennie is. But let me tell you, man, Glennie is the most poetically powerful out of all of the other translators. And that is precisely why he won an award for this translation. The deliciously immoral Frenchman, Celine with Journey to the End of the Night. And the translation is by Ralph Mannheim. We have the novelistic visionary, Aldous Huxley with the Brave New World. We have, everyone knows him, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Most people have read this, I haven't read this. I'm not too keen on reading this, but I have to read it because it is one of the central works. It is The Great Gatsby. Now for 157, 158, 159, and 160, we have one of the great, maybe the greatest modern American novelist, and that is William Faulkner. And we're going with his masterpieces, The Sound and the Fury, As I Lay Dying, Light in August, and Absalom, Absalom. We have that Russian who wrote in English and wrote better English than most English writers. What? And that is Vladimir Nabokov. First with the most Controversial novel, well, I don't know really, but very controversial novel, Lolita. Destroy and the then child. with his magnum opus, Pale File. The poet who killed himself too early at the age of 33, I think. Also, Harold Bloom's favorite poet, and that is Hart Crane. And this is the complete poems. You have the great fright of the people, the American, Ernest Hemingway. First, with the sun also rises, then his the complete short stories. We have, and I'm sad to say it's only one book, but the great Jorge Luis Borges, or Borges. And this is Fiction. Fuck it, since we're reading Ulysses, let's make our own Ulysses out of Jorge Luis Borges and let us call it the Borgesiad. Our Grecian Frankenstein shall consist of four limbs, Ficiones, labyrinths, dream tigers, and a personal anthology. 
A few of the central stories overlap in these books but each being a different translation makes these re-readings supremely Borgesian. I imagine this would make Borges smile. I didn't choose Borges' complete works because I feel like the translation of Fiction is, is a little more sharper than the other translation by I think Andrew Hurley. 1900 AD. The great predictor of political correctness, and that is George Orwell. And first it is his essays, and then I'm squeezing this together because they're pretty short, but Animal Farm and 1984. The great satirist, dark humorist, Nathaniel West. And this is his The Collected Works. We have the great Spanish poet, and that is Pablo Neruda with his Cantor General, translated by Jack Schmidt. We have, it is said, the last of the great masters, and that is Samuel Beckett. And first we're going with his quite Joycean novel, uh, it is said, Murphy, then with his trilogy, Malloy, Malone Dies, The Unnameable, and this is very un-Joycean. And then we're finishing with, not the complete dramatic works, but Waiting for Godot, which is fabulous, Endgame, and Crap's Last Tape. And maybe a little bit more of the others, like Not I. Next we have Tommaso Landolfi with Gurgle's Wife and Other Stories, and Harold Bloom has said that this is the funniest short story he has ever read. This is translated by Raymond Rosenthal, John Longrig, and Waylon Young. The edition is New Directions. The Nobel Prize winning Australian, Patrick White with Voss. Now, like Nolly Mia Tangeri, since I'm Australian, I also have to pick at least one Australian book, and that's why I picked Voss. The great African-American writer, Ralph Ellison, with his masterpiece and only finished novel, Invisible Man. The English maverick slash linguist, Anthony Burgess, also author of A Clockwork Orange, but here we have nothing like The Sun, a fictional story of Shakespeare's love life. The exposer of the gulags, the Russian Solzhenitsyn with the gulag archipelago. This is an abridged edition because it is very long in its full form and this is translated by Thomas P. Whitney and Harry Willits. Oh and I'm also supplementing it with Ordinary Men by Christopher R. Browning and this is about how ordinary men go from being ordinary to committing atrocities as part of the Nazi regime. We have The Gospel According to Jesus Christ by Sarah Mago, and this is hilarious. Translated by Giovanni Pontiero, the Italian staple Italo Calvino with Invisible Cities. The ferocious woman who kept the peacock as a pet, Flannery O'Connor, the complete stories. The modern Oscar Wilde of America, that is Gore Vidal with the outrageous Myra Breckenridge, the century's most explosively hilarious novel of far out sexuality. That seems like a novel we need in this day and time. One of the greatest modern American poets who died too young from HIV, I believe. And that is James Merrill with his epic, The Changing Light at Sandover, bringing Pentameter back into style. One of the grand contenders of the modern ages best novelists, and that is Gabriel Garcia Marquez. First with 100 Years of Solitude, then with Love in the Time of Cholera, and they are both translated by Gregory Rabasa. Sorry, Love in the Time of Cholera is translated by Edith Grossman, who also translated Don Quixote from before. Maybe the greatest science fiction writer, or maybe the most literary of the science fiction writers, and that is Ursula K. The Gwyn with The Left Hand of Darkness and we're going to supplement this with The Ones Who Walk Away from Omelas because I love that short story. I think it'd be great to read again. The very popular Toni Morrison with The Song of Solomon. Now I've chosen this over Beloved because Bloom has mentioned that this seems to him much stronger than Beloved. And I'm taking his word for it as my guide. We have the first of what they call the Four Horsemen of American novels, and that is the very dark comical writer Philip Roth. Two books. At first we have Zuckerman Bound, a trilogy, and a very fitting name for a trilogy. And then we have 
Sabbath's theatre. We have kicked McCarthy's Child of God from this spot to fit in some major plays of the 20th century, two great Irish plays and four American plays. These are things the playboy of the Western world, O'Casey's Juno and the Paycock, O'Neill's Long Day's Journey into Night, Williams' is A Streetcar Named Desire, Miller's Death of a Salesman, and Albee's The Zoo Story. I don't give a fuck, together these are still shorter than one volume of Proust. We have the descendant of Faulkner, Cormac McCarthy. We have Sutri, of which was one of David Foster Wallace's favorites, apparently. Child of God, I've read this before, but I'm gonna read it again. Next, we have The Shattering, The Violent, The Killer of the Western, perhaps the greatest novel of our time, Blood Meridian. And last of all, The Border Trilogy. And if Cormac McCarthy would just release The Passenger, that would be up here too. The third of the four horsemen, the second was McCarthy. So the third is Don DeLillo with Underworld, which is his masterpiece. We have the fourth of the four horsemen, also the greatest player of hide and seek American society has ever known, Thomas Pynchon. And we're going with first, V, second, The Crying of Lot 49, Third, Gravity's Rainbow. Fourth, Mason and Dixon. Now 199 and 200, possibly the greatest living poet we have, we got Anne Carson. First with Glass, Irony and God, Plain Water, and then Autobiography of Red. An amazing, amazing novel in verse. All right, that is the list of 200 classics done. But we have the after hours relaxation session list still to go of 25 books that are Giga Chad canon adjacent. I should say after hours, this is basically a list of everything I wanted to fit in, but I couldn't because I needed to keep it clean with 200. And we're starting that off with, this is chronological, Chesterton's In Defense of Sanity, which is the best essays of G.K. Chesterton. Due to some leaky brain last minute changes, second is Wolf's other masterpiece, The Waves. Third, we got, as I said, J.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. I have read this, can't wait to read it because I really love, love, love the movies. Fourth, we got that novelist again, Yo. William Faulkner with Sanctuary. And I'm choosing this because apparently he wrote it to be a pot boiler but it turned out to be an accidental masterpiece instead. Our fifth makes a third to Borges and Neruda, and he is Alejo Carpentier with The Kingdom of the World, translated by Pablo Medina. Six. We got the great female Irish novelist, and I've heard many good things about her from Harold Bloom, and it is Iris Murdoch with her masterpiece, apparently The Good Apprentice. Seven. We have the playful Italian once again, Italo Calvino, with If on a Winter's Night, A Traveller, the self-referential, the most self-referential novel I think there is. Eight and nine. We have Thomas Bernhard, The Loser, and Woodcutters. Apparently Thomas Bernhard is one of the great European authors of the 20th century. 10. We have Philip Roth, Portnoy's Complaint his very sexual outbreak novel. 11. We have another master writer of science fiction that I couldn't fit in the main canon, and that is John Crowley with Little Big. And it says at the top here, actually, a quotation from Harold Bloom. I always regularly reread a book that I wish more people would read, Little Big. It is literally the most enchanting 20th century book I know. Can't wait to read this. 12, 13, and 14. The Disciple of Bernhard, who might have also outdone him, and that is W.G. Sable. And we're going with Vertigo, The Rings of Saturn, and Austerlitz. Next, we have the great Indian writer and also close friends of Christopher Hitchens, Salman Rushdie, with Midnight's Children. Okay, I'm doing a last minute revision and switching the book I had at 15 with Burgess's, Anthony Burgess's, The Complete Enderby. And this is Anthony Burgess's comic masterpiece. 17, we have Roberto Bolliano. I think that's how you say his name, the 266. <laughs> 18, we have one of the great American modern playwrights, 
that is Tony Kushner with Angels in America, a gay fantasia on national themes, which is a nice subtitle. He also wrote the movie Lincoln that Steven Spielberg directed. And since Angels is one play, we're adding Harold Pinter's The Caretaker and The Homecoming and Tom Stoppard's Jumpers, Travesties and The Invention of Love. Now 19, David Foster Wallace with his big boy oh, in shit Jess. Here we go again. I read the first uh, 20 pages of this and damn, I love David Foster Wallace's writing style. And I know Harold Bloom hated David Foster Wallace. So I am rebelling against the master with this bad boy. Now 20, this author I'm also taking a risk on. His newest book I think got nominated for a Pulitzer. So hopefully he is good enough for this list. And that is Mark Z. Danielewski with House of Leaves. I've heard this is the most disturbing novel of all time and I hope it is. I cannot wait. And it just looks intriguing as hell. 21, we're swinging back around the David Foster Wallace again with a brief interviews with hideous men. Livian. Yeah, now why? I'm paying so much respect to David Foster Wallace because He's the reason why I'm into literature. The first short story to ever make me cry is in here, Incarnations of Burned Children. That day I was at work and on my break, I was reading this short story for uni and God damn, I couldn't hold my tears back. Actually 22, we got another risk and this is on the word of Harold Bloom who said his works was really good and that is Joshua Cohen with Book of Numbers. And I mean, <laughs> The first page speaks for itself. First line, if you're reading this on the screen, fuck off. I only talk if I'm gripped with both hands. Nice. So yeah, hey, I mean, he's got swag if he's got nothing else. At 23 is Carpentier's Explosion in a Cathedral translated by John Starock, a book which after reading apparently caused Marquez to abandon the first draft of 100 Years of Solitude and start again from scratch. Second to last, 24, we have again, for the last time, David Foster Wallace, and this is his last unfinished novel, but it was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize, The Pale King. And last but not least, 25, we have, this is gonna be a curveball, but it is Douglas Hofstadter's Gerdel Escher Gerdel. Gerdel Escher Bach, an eternal, Golden Braid, also the winner of a Pulitzer Prize. And I think this would bring everything together and give us a relaxing, soft landing on which to come down. And anyone who's asking what this book is about, it is nonfiction and there's a whole introductory section in here by the author explaining his inability to explain what this book is about. So we have a nice subtitle that just says, a metaphorical fugue on minds and machines in the spirit of Lewis Carroll. Enough said. We have done it. That's it guys. Now, if you thought this video was worthwhile in the eyes of our algorithmic overlords, then hit the like button. If you think I missed a humongous pick or you just hate the ones that I depict, then leave a comment. If you want to see videos in the future that analyze slash explain slash review all of these books we talk about, then hit that subscribe button. Or if you can just stand my goofy ass face for longer than five minutes, also hit that subscribe button and clinkity clink that bell. Well, hasn't this been fun? I'll see you in a few days.